now that I've gotten this out of the way, I want to thank you very much for staying with us today and for coming today. It's really good to see so many of you in church today. And um, today I want to conclude the third part of the three-part series on spiritual gifts. Now let me just tell you, um, at the end of this series, we have a spiritual gifts analysis or inventory that has been posted in our church group, WhatsApp group, but it's also on your website. I want every member, even if you know your spiritual gifts, just for the sake of you being sure, do it please. If you cannot do the assessment, that's okay. Just send it to me or to Sister Staple, and we will do it for you and tell you what your gifts are. But please, Everyone looking online, I want you to go to the Willsden website or it's in our membership group. Download the spiritual gifts inventory and attempt it. And you don't have to do the analysis, but the analysis can be done by you if you feel adventurous. If you cannot do it, just send it in to us. I'm going to give you the emails in a while and we will help you do it. It is imperative. You know, um, this morning as I was, uh, you, know, you know, getting ready to come, you know, the, you know, the Spirit said to me that, you know, I should tell you that after doing this spiritual gift inventory, you should let us know where you want to serve. So, for instance, if you, upon completing your inventory, you recognize you had a gift in an area, feel free to tell us. Can I serve in this department next year? Because that's the gift you think you have that we may not know. So, um, so, I, so I'm giving you the opportunity, we are giving you the opportunity to volunteer yourself. Uh, don't say that no one has appointed me to serve. If you think that the Lord is leading you to serve in an area, tell me. Or tell any of the elders. And by the grace of God, it might just be that is his will for your life. Okay? Now, today we were supposed to do the nominating, the large committee, but that will be done next week. Let's go on to our presentation for this morning. Knowing and understanding your spiritual gifts. Okay? What is a spiritual gift? Again, I'm not going to spend too long on that because Ella Leslie so beautifully this, uh, um, told you what's a spiritual gift. Um, but a spiritual gift, I want you to note something carefully here. It is given by the church. Is that what it says? A spiritual gift is distributed by who? The Holy Spirit. So the church is not the one who gives you the gift. It is the Holy Spirit and you use it for the body of Christ. I want you to know that very carefully. We spoke about that last week, and so I'm not going to spend too much time on that because there is a lot we want to do this morning. Um, okay, what should you know quickly about spiritual gifts? Okay, I'm trying to change it here, guys. If you find I'm taking long, you can just help me move it on quickly. Um, we said that last week, no particular gift is isolated from the other. So if I have a gift and you have a gift, our gifts should be working together. In other words, um, my gift is not better than yours. Um, my gift is not more important than yours. No matter what you do in the church, even though I may be more visible than some people, it doesn't mean that my work is more important. Now let me tell you this, folks. Let me tell you this. When we get to heaven, there is only a crown of life. There isn't a more golden crown or a more whiter robe. It is a white robe and a crown. It means, therefore, that it doesn't matter how much you do. What is important is you doing it faithfully. So whether you're doing little or much, just do it faithfully. Uh, because when you do your work faithfully and I do my work faithfully, then together, um, God says in the end, well done. Now, I heard a message two weeks ago at 
Pastor Sophie appeared. Um, how do you call it again? It was not ordination. Commissioning. I'm going to say ordination, but you know, I don't know the church is playing with those two words. I mean, anyway, let me not get into that this morning. Let me not get into commissioning. That message, folks, has done something to me in a way that I just, you know, even this morning I was telling my wife, I said, you know, that message has rewired something in my mind because the questions that Jesus will ask us, you know, and listen, folks, that message, uh, I mean, uh, you know, and I wish some of you could go and look at that message, but um, the, the speaker said some things that I, I will never forget. She said, on the day of judgment, when Jesus comes, the questions that he's going to ask you is not how much church board you chair. He ain't going to ask you how much sermons you preach. The questions are very simple. And you know, as I sat there, I said, but you know, look at this. You know, we go to, I go to school for all these years and they never taught me that. They teach me how to read Hebrew and Greek and, and, and it's so simple. Listen, brethren, it was so simple. When I, that day, I said, what did I go to school for? Because the exam is so simple. And the question is, have you fed the hungry? Have you clothed the naked? Have you visited? You see, some of you don't even believe the questions. You don't even believe it because you're expecting it to be, do you understand the 25 fund, I mean, 28 fundamentals? Listen, it's very simple. Have you fed them? Have you clothed them? Have you visited those in prison? So folks, you know, I'm recognizing that's where gifts comes in. Because you see, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we have to be prepared to answer these questions. Not how many Sabbaths you came to church. Have you visited those in prison and gave food to those who were? So, after that message, my prayer to the Lord is, Lord, give me a heart of empathy. And when I say empathy, brethren, empathy is not sympathy. Empathy is being able to walk where people walk. So I'm ready to go and pass to the community. I was telling my wife, I said, I'm ready to go and pass to the community. Be a pastor in the community. Walking on the streets and telling people about Jesus. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the questions that he's going to ask me will be so different what I'm preparing for now. Anyway, let me get on with my presentation this morning. I mean, I don't know who took me on this part here. I'm just sharing it in my burden. The Great Commission and our spiritual gifts. Now, let me just say this, brethren. As Adventists, as Adventists, um, we have been talking a lot about the Great Commission. Uh, Ella Leslie spoke about it this morning. Um, we have to go forth, make disciples, baptize them, teach them, and then God promises he's going to give us his presence. Now, the Great Commission cannot be done by the pastor or elders. The Great Commission has to be done by everyone. And how do we do it? Now, that Great Commission there, brethren, is also found in Matthew 25. Not just Matthew 28, Matthew 25. Now, um, just move on quickly with me this morning. So, Ellen White says in Evangelism, page 256, ministers frequently neglect these important branches of the work, health reform, spiritual gifts. Now, now, of course, we talk a lot about health reform, but the issue of spiritual gifts cannot be neglected. If you know your gift, it just opens up your life and it gives you joy. What it is give you joy. You know when you are gifted, when the cameras have left. And you can still be happy doing it. When you're left all alone. 
and you can still be happy doing it, you know it's gift. Because it's one thing to be serving when the crowd is around you. And everyone can applaud you. But it's another thing to be serving alone. You're the only volunteer, but you're still happy. Even if you're alone, you will still do it. That calls for a gift. And we're going to talk about that this morning. Okay? God has set in the church, great uh, gospel workers says, God has set in the church different gifts. These are precious in their proper place that all may work their part in preparing a people for Christ's soon coming. That's what um, the servant of the Lord said. God has set the gifts in their proper place within the church. Okay, so what are the gifts in the Bible? I want to, um, there are three passages that basically have all the gifts that are mentioned in the scripture. Romans 12 1 Corinthians 12, and Ephesians 4. So in Romans 12, we have there prophecy, teaching, service, giving, leadership, and mercy. You can read it when you get some time. In 1 Corinthians 12, you have prophecy, teaching, service, wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, discerning of spirits, tongues and its interpretation, helps, and administration. In Ephesians 4, we have prophecy, teaching, apostle, evangelist, and pastor. So these are the gifts as enunciated in Scripture. Now let's see if we can explain this a little bit more. Okay? Can we move on to the next slide? So, according to the gifts I showed you, there are what I call gifts for the universal church, such as the gifts of being an apostle, prophet, pastor, evangelist. Now, when I say universal church, um, it, it serves the wide church. So a pastor, um, you know, does not just serve the local church. He, he serves the universal church. He, especially if he's ordained, he can travel around the world. An evangelist goes anywhere you call him to preach. Uh, prophets, likewise. So these gifts serve the universal church. They are not localized or restricted to any one area. Uh, okay, uh, put it back on the screen. And then we have not just gifts that serve the universal church. We have, okay, go back to the next slide, thank you. Okay, yeah, there we go. Then we have gifts that are more suited for the family, such as um, the local church, such as helps, giving, mercy, administration. So these gifts are more localized gifts that you do within more of a family setting, such as the local church setting. So we have gifts that are broad scale, pastor, teacher, administration, um, um, prophets, evangelists, but you have gifts that are suited for the local church, such as um, mercy, helps, service, etc. Now, the thing is, all the gifts are given to the church for a particular reason. Um, okay, this is playing up this morning on me, okay? Then we have what we call the power gifts, such as speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues. Um, um, the Adventist church is frightened of those gifts, the, 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 the power gifts. We don't want to touch those gifts um, because we think, you know, you know, those gifts were only given, you know, you, know, you know. We are frightened to talk in tongues, which really is not a bad gift because it simply means you're interpreting language. Um, and then you have the serving gifts such as mercy and faith and helps. We have the outreach gifts such as evangelism, um, miracles and healing. And then we have the spiritual maturity gifts such as teaching and knowledge and wisdom and exhortation. So the gifts are not all the same. Some, they, we, we tend to categorize them so that everyone doesn't have to be doing the same thing. 
But what the gift does is that it allows us to see how the church comes together in being a unified, a unified um, body. And then we have the leadership gifts, such as um, apostleship, pastor, teacher, etc. And of course, you have the supportive gifts, such as healing and miracles, etc. So these are just some classifications. They, it varies with, um, it depends on which books you read, but um, I just want you to know that all the gifts are not just in one cluster. They are in different clusters. So you have leadership gifts, supportive gifts, um, you have gifts for the universal church, um, you have gifts for the local church, etc. But what you find is that some people don't have one gift. Some people have many different gifts, and we call that a cluster of gifts. So there are some people who have what we call the support cluster. That is, these people, you will find them in things like community services. You will find them as greeters, and they are the people who like to make people feel welcome. The support cluster, hospitality, service, giving, mercy. These people will give until they don't have anything to give. Um, the support cluster. So you find that, and generally, when someone is very hospitable, you often find they like to help. When someone is very hospitable, they like to give because it comes in a cluster. Counselors. Then you have the teacher cluster. These people like to talk. Knowledge, they have it. Teaching, they like it. You know, the knowledge cluster. Um, and you may find that someone who has the knowledge cluster, they like reading, they like studying, they like, you know, you know, you know because that's, that's, that's a gift that God has given them. Um, the knowledge cluster. So what I'm saying to you this morning is that you, chances are, if you identify one gift, try to know the cluster it is in. Because you may recognize you don't just have one gift, but you have the whole lot of them. It is only that you've only identified one. And I've found that with people, that they have a lot of gifts, but one is more prominent than the other. Because that is what they've been exposed to. But if only you expose yourself some more, you recognize there's a lot more things you can do that you never thought you could have done. Okay? Put it back on the screen for me, thanks. Okay. And then we have what we call the, uh, the, e the, evangelist, the evangelist cluster. Um, okay. Okay. The evangelist cluster, so such, these are people like pastors, um, Bible workers, missionaries. They, um, they, uh, they you know, generally a pastor, you know, ought to be an evangelist, a missionary, sort of that sort. So, you know, that cluster of gifts is something that he enjoys. Then you have the leader cluster. Such people, they love administration. They are very good leaders, etc., etc. And then the sign cluster. Let me tell you this. When I was reading, the, the sign cluster is what got to me because I recognized that the thing, you know, um, things like miracles and healing and casting out demons, not every and anybody could do that. And that's why you shouldn't just call anybody to cast out a demon. And don't say, well, you're a pastor, you cannot cast out demons. No, 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 no. Because let me tell you this, it's a gift. It's a gift. And it's important for us to know our gifts. I know a, a guy who went to cast out a demon and the demon beat him up. <laughs> you know, demons can fight, you know. <laughs> demons can fight. <laughs> and, 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 and. And, um, you, know, at, you know, I mean, I think I shared that with you already. I went to pray for a young girl who had a demon, myself, in a campaign. <laughs> and, you know, the girl flew in the air like a ninja. You know, you know, you, you, know, you, you saw, watch just Kung Fu movie and them. You know, with Jet Li and them. The girl was far from me. She flew and kicked the Bible out of my hand. And the Bible went up in the air. And that young 17-year-old girl started to talk in voice that made me heart start to go fast. And let me tell you a secret. I wanted to run. <laughs> but I said, I said, if I run, 
What people go say about the pastor? They go say, Pastor running. <laughs> no, 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 I'll tell you. You know, it's not easy when you hear people start talking strangely. So I stood up there and I said, Not tonight. That's me, elders, and them starting to look behind. I said, No, we're not going nowhere. We pray. But, but the point I'm making is that not everybody could do that. It's a gift, the gift of exorcism. So I'm just making this point to say to you that you don't have to, um, you know, not everybody can do everything. Uh, some people have been given special gifts by God. And, and there are some folks, you know, you call them to do something and they do it so easily. And you wonder why. That's just their gift. Next on the screen. Um, so, so the clusters of gifts are divided into three groups, three types. And I want you to note this this morning. Either your gift is motivational, ministry, or manifestation. So all the gifts you have can fall into one of these three categories. Either it is motivational, it is ministry focused, or it is manifestation. So let's see if we can explain this a little bit more. I want you to understand this. So what are Motivational gifts. Uh, okay, let's go on to motivational gifts. So, motivational gifts are how God is working in you to motivate your words and actions. So, in other words, there are some gifts God works either in you, there are some gifts he works with you, that is ministry, there are some gifts he works through you, that is manifestation. So let me give you some examples. In motivational gifts, we have gifts like prophecy. The prophet proclaims the will of God. God has to speak in him. God does something for the prophets. Yeah, then you have serving. You know, God has to touch your heart that you can serve people. Teaching, God must give you the wisdom. These are gifts that God must do something in you. Then you have the gift of exhorting. He must put the words in your mouth so that you can say the right things. The gift of giving, unless God touches your heart. You would not give. So these are gifts. You must be motivated by the Holy Spirit. He puts the need and this desire in you. So let me just go over these motivational gifts because these are very important. Prophecy, prophesying. So I don't just get up and say, that's what I'm prophesying. No, God puts it in me and I prophesy. The prophet doesn't speak his own words. Serving teaching. Um, all of these gifts, really, if you do them properly, they motivate people. Exhorting, um, giving, um, organizing. That's a good motivational gift. You know, not everyone can organize. Um, mercy, etc. So your gift can be very motivational, meaning to say that the gift you have, God can use it to inspire others. But there are some people, their gifts are in doing. Don't give them a sermon to preach. Don't ask them to come up here. And you know, I recognize that we should not, we should avoid trying to belittle people when we ask them to do things and they say, I can't do it. They say, oh, you're in church for all that years and you can't pray. No, because I recognize that there are some people, it's not that they cannot do it. It takes a lot. You know, um, some people literally get cold feet, you know. Um, big people, you're calling them to pray, and it's difficult. And when you understand gifts, you recognize that we should try to avoid embarrassing people. When we ask them to do things, and either they shy away from doing it. And sometimes a lot has to do with their confidence in themselves to just do it like that. But what I found is such person, take them on the field 
And you'll say, hey, is that the same person in the church? He doesn't say nothing in the church. But look at him. Give them something to do. And you will recognize, hey, hey, is that the same person? I recognize there are some of us, we are not too good in doing things publicly. But give us something to do with our hands. Give us a bread to bake. Give us something to knit. Put a tool in your hand and you become a different person. And that's because your gift may be more in what you can do in terms of ministry-wise. So while church provides a platform for gifts, all gifts cannot function in church. So do not think that because you are not serving in church, your gifts cannot be used. In fact, I have found that your gifts should be used seven days a week. You're driving down the road and you see somebody on the highway break, broken down, everyone passing them. But because you have the gift of help, you pull up. Why are you pulling up? Because in you, that's a gift you have. Are you okay? You know, you know, have you call, you know, you know, break down, you know, yes, yes, and then you move on. That's a gift of help. Because it's in you. So we all have it. And it doesn't always have to be seen in church. So don't think that because you don't have an office in the church, that your gifts cannot be shown. In fact, your gifts doesn't need an office or an appointment. What your gift needs is you. And if you have it, you can use it. So I have found that when somebody is gifted, no matter what you do, you cannot stop them. And when I say you cannot stop them, they will find ways to do their gifts. And the reason being, when God bless you with a gift, you just have to use it. Because it is God who gives it to you. So some gifts are ministry focused. And so you may not find them motivational, which is mainly in church. You may find them more um, in the case of you know, what you can do for people and what you can do for the community. Next slide. Okay, um, uh, and then I'm not going to read this. Let me go on to the last um, category of gift, which is manifestation. That is how God can work through you. Uh, manifestation gifts are where the supernatural presence of God. So I have found that the pastor may not be the person in church who is closest to God. Now when I say that, I don't mean the pastor is not spiritual. But the pastor may not have the gift of manifestation. That is, there are some people, when they pray, when they pray, you know, listen, the gift of manifestation is, you know, somebody's sick, you come and put your hand in them and pray for them. And there are some people, when they pray, things happen now. Now, I, have found, I used to wonder and say, oh, why is it happening like that? But I'm recognizing there are some people, their gift is manifestation. So let me put it back on the screen for me, let me show you this. So for instance, okay, the Spirit of God can work in these people in a very direct way. And that's why the gift of intercessory prayer is not just simply something anyone can do. It has to be a gift. So someone is sick. Not everyone can pray for healing. Now, you can pray for them. And you know why? Not everyone has the faith. Because it is not the person who is most spiritual or better than you, you know. A lot of us pray, but we doubt it. Praying and believing is something else, you know. And I have found that if you start to pray and believe it, sometimes when God starts to work, it makes you frightened. So early in my ministry, when I used to go praying for people, I told you already, uh, when I went and prayed for the lady and she died. 
And um, I tell you, that devastated me for weeks. I said, how can I pray for the woman? And she died. And then, as I grew in ministry, I recognized that was the will of God. But I thought that once you pray, healing should come. And, uh, and, 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 and as you grow, you recognize, you know what? Um, you know, God teaches you different things. That sometimes, you know what? Um, you know, while you are doing what you are doing, God may not work in the way that you think he should work. Um, now, I'm recognizing that sometimes my lack of faith could have been the hindrance. Um, because you're praying, but you're not sure if God could do it. And if you lack faith, faith without works is dead. And so there are some people, they have faith. And we just think they're crazy. Oh, the doctor tell you, you have one month to leave. And somebody come from nowhere and start to tell you, don't worry that crazy doctor. No, 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 okay, don't worry me. God said you can leave. And we said, no, but the doctor says. But he said, no, God says you can leave. Listen, this is faith. This is faith. Not everyone have that faith. And I'm saying to us, that comes with a gift. Um, because sometimes we like to go by what we see and what we hear. But I found that the gift of manifestation is one that, you know, when God gives it to you, people think you're crazy. Because you see the impossible. You, you perceive the imperceptible. That's the gift of manifestation. So, um, so, so, so not everyone can become a prayer warrior. Even if you like prayer. You have to have the gift. Let's move on to the next slide. So, such gifts are the working of miracles, the gift of healing, the gift of wisdom. Wisdom. You know, there are some people who do not have much academic letters behind their name, but they have wisdom. You see, wisdom, you can't get it in the classroom. They cannot teach you that it's a gift. And that gift is given by God. Um, so, so, so all the gifts you have, I want you to note where you fall in. Do you, are you motivational? Is it, are you someone that believes that you should be up here? You should be doing something in the church. Are you someone who believes that the church is not a place where you can do your gift? You, you like, you're a more hands-on person. You want to be in the community. You want to be doing something for your neighbors. That's ministry. Or are you someone who like healing? You like prayer. You like to cast out demons. You, you like to visit the hospital and pray for the sick. Then it means that your gifts takes you in different sphere of service. So, all of us in the church, our gifts do not contain us in the church. We can all be gifted and be functioning in different arena. So, don't think because you don't see or hear me in church, it means I'm not using my gift. Okay, let's move on to the next slide quickly. Now, knowing and using, how to discover your spiritual gifts. That's very important now. Okay, take notes. Pray to God about this. If you have to discover your gift, you must pray to God about it. You cannot just listen to this seminar and know your gift. Ask God to show you what is my gift. And he will show it to you. So you must pray. Or ask people to help you pray. Secondly, how to discover it. The next thing you need to do. Be willing to what? I didn't get everybody. Be willing to. So don't just pray, but volunteer. Because if I'm only praying, 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 and I'm not willing to get up from my knees, get me hands dirty. You know, 
And that's the thing. I find we, you know, sometimes we're praying too much. And we're not working enough. Let us pray and work together. So, spend all the time praying. But there comes a time you have to get up from your knees. Take up the track. Take up your Bible. Put on the gloves and do something. So you got to be willing to work. So God wants you to be um, using your gifts. Um, volunteer. That's how you get to know your gifts. So pray, be willing to use it. The next thing I want you to do is get informed about your gifts. And that's what I want you to do. That's what we are doing here. We are teaching about gifts. And that's part of discovering your gifts. So read more about gifts. That helps you to know what your gifts are. Next one. And that's very important. Discover what keeps you up in the night. Thinking. Discover what gives you joy. If we put you in somewhere, in a position that you're not gifted in, you wouldn't wait until the year end. You can't wait until the, the year end to say, not me again. <laughs> because, and, 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 and let me tell you this. You see, it could really be, and not, I'm not saying that's the only reason, but it could well be that you have not yet found your niche. Because when you find your gift, until you die, you don't need to know. When you found what gives you joy, Nothing takes it from you. Even when you don't feel like it. You know, somebody say, how are you doing today? I don't feel so good. But you're still doing what you have to do. You know, sometimes you don't feel well, but you get up and you're still cooking. You get up and you still go to work. You get up and you still go and do your errands. That's how your gifts are. When you don't feel like it because you're gifted, you're still doing it. Say, oh, you're not feeling well today and you're still here because you know what? I can't stay quiet. It's in me. It's in me. I don't feel like it. But if I don't do it, I feel guilty because God has given me that gift. So, I found people when they're gifted, even if they have to take a walking stick, they're coming. If they have to walk on crutches, they're coming. So, Yesterday, I visited a food bank in Haro. You know, you know, you know in fact, I was isolating for 10 days, and the, my, my 10 days end yesterday. So as soon as my 10 days end, I went to visit a food bank in Haro because I met this lady at a meeting, and she said, she, and she said to me, Pastor, you've got to come and see. She's a Hindu lady. She said, you got to come and see uh, our food bank in Haro. It's called um, London Community Kitchen. Listen, I went there. I'm going to talk to you about it another day. But when I went there, I saw some old ladies coming on the chairs to volunteer. You know, um, driving the little um, chair. They come in and they're packing what they have to pack for two hours and they go back home. And I said, what a beautiful thing. That even though they are old, they come in and give her two hours volunteering. You know, and that's because... For them, it gives them satisfaction. That's how your gifts are. When you know your gifts, you know, it gives you satisfaction doing it. Um, that's how your spiritual gift works. Next, next slide. Evaluate your efficiency with honesty. So, Ella Leslie, let me talk to you now. It's only you and I talking. Ella Leslie Thomas. You know, I could pray for the gift of singing, but I have to be honest with myself. I have to be honest with myself. You know, if, if I try singing and I look at your faces in the congregation and you are just shaking your head, and <laughs> of course, you can be saying, Lord, have mercy upon him. He's willing. Or you can be feeling the Holy Spirit. I don't know why you're shaking your head. But you know what? I've recognized that 
not everything is for everybody. So um, there are some things I love. I love playing the keyboard. Listen, man, I wish, my brother, I wish. You know, I've been to some churches where there was no musicians, but they have a keyboard. And I wish I could play something. So when I got married, my wife, she plays. She started to teach me. And then she said, you are a hopeless cause. <laughs> you know, I mean, she said, she said, no, 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 no. I mean, I mean, she said, you know, I mean, I mean, do you want to learn music or not? And I recognize it's better to teach children. Children learn because all two little children now, they are, you know, quickly, they're just learning the music from her. But for me, my fingers are stiff. Say, come loosen up your finger. So, but I love music. But music don't love me. So I've become contented to sit down and listen to you. I will enjoy your music. And when I get to heaven, wait, I'm going to play better than you. <laughs> when I get to heaven, but on earth, you sit down here for now, I'll enjoy your playing. I, no, 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 I'm not going to go there anymore. But there are some people, you know, you know you, you got to know your limits. Know what you can do. Some things, you like it, just enjoy it. Because, you know, be honest with yourself about what you want to do. And when you know what you want to do, and you are honest with yourself, you don't try to make yourself do things that you know is out of your remit, okay? Let's go on quickly. Seek people's opinions. So, not just, I should say I'm gifted, when Glendon listens to me, she says, Pastor, boy, you could join the praise team, you know. Because, Others hear you and they also identify your gift. Because when God gives you a gift, he shows it to other people. They tell you, boy, you know, you could do something. You know, whenever you do this, whenever you do this, the church is blessed. You know, you know whenever you touch this, something happens. So people, seek the opinions of people. Okay? Now we are talking about identifying your gifts. So some people might be telling you, you are very well in doing this. Don't just take it as a compliment. Don't say, thank you very much and walk away. No! That's a warning sign for you. God may have given you a gift. And you need to pray to God about it. Next one. Not just should you seek the opinion of others. I want to show you now how to use your spiritual gifts quickly. How to use a spiritual... Um, Okay, uh, okay, can you just go back quickly? Okay, I think, okay, there you go. Okay, um, I'm not gifted in using this thing at all. Um, okay, now on the website, we have a spiritual gift inventory. Um, that I want you to please take some time to do. Um, you need at least one hour to do it. Uh, if you go on the website, on the uh, ministries, personal ministries, resources, you will get it there. Um, and we've also posted it you know, on, on, on our platforms. I want everyone to please find that. Now, when you do this um, spiritual gift inventory, put it put back the slide on the screen. Um, each, there is 120 statements. That's why you need an hour. Take your time and read it. You know, um, don't rush through it. Don't do it when you're sleeping. Um, do it when you're awake and alert. Um, and of course, all the questions have uh, uh, from one to ten. One meaning the statement doesn't describe you at all. Ten meaning it describes you perfectly. After you're finished with it, I want you either to attempt analyzing it, but you don't have to. Um, you can always send it in to us, okay? Um, and when I say send it in to us, um, you can either send it in to Sister Elsie Staple um, to at gmail.com, or you can send it in um, to myself. I thought I had my email there, but I didn't put it in there. Um, my email address is Bishop Mario. 
1313 at gmail.com. Bishop Mario 13 at, at gmail.com. You know, somebody asked me, Pastor, why are you calling yourself Bishop? I told him I was doing Greek, and the Greek word for, in the Bible, the Greek word for Bishop is, is uh, for uh, a pas, is Episcopos, the Bishop. So I love Greek so much, I said, let me call myself Bishop. So Bishop Mario 13 at gmail.com. So you can send your service back to me, to myself as a staple, and um, we will try to get it evaluated for you, okay? But please, I want everyone to download, download the inventory and do it and send it back to us, okay? Okay, next, um, next slide quickly. Now, um, when you do that, I want you, we will tell you what are your gifts. And sometimes we will find that there are some gifts that are primary and some that are secondary. So I want you to identify what are your main gifts, what are the gifts that you are... So, so that will be determined by the inventory. After you identify your gifts, we would like you to categorize them, okay? And when I say categorize them, I want you to decide if they are ministry gifts, if they are motivational gifts, or if they are manifest manifestation gifts. So you must be able to categorize your gifts and say, okay, no, no, this is more like more ministry oriented, this is more manifest, etc., etc., etc. It's possible. Um, it's possible that you can have a, a motivational gift, a manifestational gift. A, that's possible. Um, you know, I, 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 I'm you're right. I never thought about it. But, you know, if I say not possible, I'm limiting the Holy Spirit. So, <laughs> technically, I've never thought about it. But it's possible that you can. Because the Holy Spirit is the one who can give you, that, you know, you know, you know that, that gift. Okay, just help me move it, move it on quickly there, uh, Chiron. Thank you. So, so, after you categorize the gifts, I want you to define your roles. In other words, you need to decide on, we're talking about how to use your gifts. So you identify it, you categorize it, define your roles. In other words, you need to know what is it is expected of you, if that is your gift. And then, after you do that, next one on the screen, uh, we want you to list the ministries that you can be uh, serving in the church. So I've recognized my gift is serving. I like speaking. I like teaching. I also like planning. What are, what, you know, what are the, read up on these gifts and then look at the church and say, what are the areas in the church that I can, that I can um, use these gifts? Now, if there is no ministry in the church that you think you can serve, form your own ministry. Now, I didn't say form your own church. There's a difference, you know. Form your own, in other words, do something that could get you busy. And because that, that's what you want to do. You want to make sure that you are using your gifts in service. Okay, so, so, so list the ministries in the church. The next thing I wanted to do is, apart from listing your ministries, put it on the screen. Okay, is identify the barriers. And let me tell you this. Some of the barriers that you're going to find will be people. In church, if, if you want to do something... One of the barriers will be someone will tell you, oh, you know what? You're very new to this thing, you know. You know, you know, you just come here, you know. You know. Uh, so expect barriers. And let me some people get daunted by this. Because there are barriers, they feel discouraged and they pack up and go. Say, no, 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 no. But let me tell you this. If you have a gift, if people are criticizing, that's okay. It's a barrier. But in life, when I go to work, people criticize me. I don't take my bag and go home. Why should I stop using my gift in church because, they are criti because I'm criticized? That's okay. Just weather the storm. You know, put a little goat skin on your back. And brace yourself. 
and God will make a way. God, you know, that's a beautiful thing in church. If God gives you a gift, even though you are battered on many sides, God will see you through. He will, he will. And that's why I love serving in the church. Because God ultimately makes a way if he has gifted you. So, so you will get barriers and anticipate the barriers, anticipate the criticism, but rise above it and use your gifts for the Lord. Okay, let me bring this thing home quickly. Now, these presentations will be um, on the website um, so that you can go back and look at them at your own, at your own um, you know, leisure. Because I want you to please go over these over and over again. Back to the screen. Um, we want you to um, ensure that you get people to help you. Um, get to know people. Don't, don't think that if you have a gift, that you can do it all alone. Look for people who like doing what you do. And let them help you. So find the people that you resonate with. And really, in church... I wish the cliques we have are gifts are, are gift oriented. You okay, know, when I see a little click here, they tell me, "Oh, pastor, that's a service click." I'm happy, but the click shouldn't be. No, no, you're not welcome here. You know, you know, because no, no, no. You know, the click should be gift oriented clicks. But find your friends who like to do what you do, and make that your ministry group. Uh, a few years ago, um, about two years ago, uh, the personal ministry department came up with the life groups. And the whole idea was to find people like you that share your gifts and form a group where you can encourage each other. That was the whole idea. And it was just a beautiful concept. We call it cell groups. But, you know, that, that was the whole concept then. Um, but you need people around you to help you grow your gift. So find those who are already gifted and who can help you develop your gift. So if you like to sing, get to know the musicians in the church and let them help you. You like to preach, get to know the elders in the church. You like serving, get to know the community ministries people in the church. You like hospitality, get to know the hospitality people in the church. You like to, you know, you know, you know, you like the community, get to know the community ministries leader. And you will find that as you get to know the right people, they will help to polish you to encourage and to develop your gift. Okay? What's the next one I have there? Um, support groups. You got to get support groups. We spoke about that already. I'm not going to spend too much time. And of course, you must plan what you're going to do. You cannot have a gift and not be using it. It is very important that you have a plan that's why I want you to do the inventory for us. After you do the inventory and you identify your gifts, if you find it difficult for you to come up with a plan, we can help you. But my prayer for Wills then, and those of you listening to me, is that when you get your gifts, you're going to use them for the Lord. Uh, so that the church can become a beehive of people using their gifts. Listen, brethren, you know, church cannot run the way it used to run. Let's go back to church. I said, no, we're not going back. We're going forward with church. Church must go forward. And the way we go forward with church is people using their gifts as God has gifted them. Okay, I think we are almost at the end now. Um, how to discover my gifts? Study God's word. Obey God's word. Got to study his word, obey his word. Desire that he gives you more gifts. Okay? How to discover my gifts. Know why you are asking for it. Don't ask God gifts for selfish reason. And do not use your gift to show off. Use your gift to glorify God. Um, and then ask others to lay hands on you and pray for you. Don't be afraid to ask people to pray for you. Uh, that would help you to discover your gifts. How to discover your gifts. How to discover your gifts. Number one, I want to quickly try it. Try it. If you feel like singing, sing. The first note may not be right, but the third may be. Try it. 
Don't think I'm gifted and don't do anything. Try it. Identify your needs and try it. You know, or if you see something in the church to do, don't tell the pastor, do it. Because you see, folks, sometimes you see something to do, just do it. And sometimes only in heaven we may find out. Not everything you see. Sometimes God shows you something because that's your gift, you know. <laughs> you know, people come to you because that's your gift. Not every time somebody come to you is for you to go to somebody else. Sometimes God sends them to you because he has gifted you to help them. So you got to try it. You have a gift, try it. We're almost to the end. The other way I want us to do it, um, after we try it, well, of course, we seek it. So it's okay for you to seek gifts. You may not have it, but you want to develop it. It's okay for you to seek spiritual gifts. Okay? Um, how do you seek spiritual gifts? Can you just move on with the slide? Uh, be open to receiving from God. Humbly ask Him for it so God can give you new gifts. Then the next one, you try it, you seek it. We want you not just seek it, go on to the next one, evaluate it. So you should recognize and ask, how am I doing with this gift? And let God help you to improve your gift. So try it, seek it, evaluate it. Look at how you're doing and improve. So you should become better and better. You know, I, I remember as a little boy growing up, there was a girl in my church in Victoria. I mean, the first time she sang, the church laughed. And you know, I can never forget that. Um, today, that girl's voice, you know, as if God said, I'm going to bless you double for your trouble. You know, because she tried it, it didn't work out, but she wanted to sing. And God blessed her. I don't know, you know, she went to do voice training, and that voice developed. And today, she's doing solo on her own. You know, that's what happens with your gifts. Today, you may not know what your gifts are, but God can help you discover it. You may have tried to do something that you think you're gifted in, and people tell you you, you are a failure at it. Keep trying. Be honest with yourself. If you want to do it to glorify God, let God. God will help you to do it. But we want more for members that wills them. You know, nominating committees can be difficult because we're trying to get people to serve the Lord. But what really should be happening is that we should be looking at where your gifts are and put you to serve where you are gifted. And I found that if you find one person who is gifted, they could run a department, you know. You could, get, you could have 10 people in a department who are not gifted. And the department does nothing. So what we need is not numbers. We need gifts. If God has given you a gift, you could do it. So that's why we want you to identify your gift. And if you find it, God can bless it. Let us pray for you that you can develop it and just use it. And brothers and sisters, you know, we cannot give you any rewards for using your gift. One day God will say to you, well done. Well done. And I know there are a lot of you who are using your gift. The church may not know. Your names may not be called from this desk. But one day you will hear, well done. Have you identified your gift this morning? Do you know your gift? You might be here and you may not have been doing nothing that you know you should be doing. Ask God this morning, what is it you have brought me into your kingdom to do? Let me do it. And if you can do it, do it well. So his name can be glorified. Today, I want to pray for you. 
Let us pray. Father in heaven, Lord, here we are. You know each of us better than we know ourselves. You've called us into this kingdom to serve humanity and to serve you. Some of us have been using our gifts. Hallelujah. Thank you for those whose gifts have made this church what it is today. But Lord, much more of us can do it. Today, oh God, I want to pray that your Holy Spirit will fall on your church again. We need help. More of us can get involved. But Lord, they need an awakening. We need an awakening. Show someone this morning, this afternoon, their gifts. And may they use it for your glory. Help them to identify it. Help them to seek it, to try it, to evaluate it. And whether that gives the motivation, ministry, or manifestation, may it work for your glory. Lord, we want this church here at Wilsden to become a beehive of ministries where every member is using their gifts for your glory. Bless us to this end, we pray in Jesus' name.